But the title that Daryl gave me for this uh, time this morning was The Impact of Pain for Catastrophic Care. And I want to give you a, a completely up-to-date story that happened this morning. Uh, my wife and I, we, we are blessed with a home with plenty of space. Our four kids are all grown up and gone. We're blessed with 11 wonderful grandchildren. Most of the time, our house feels a bit empty. And so we've got a couple staying with us at the moment while they uh, wait for their own house to be finished. Uh, and earlier this morning, uh, he, the husband, uh, reached out to me and said, tell me there, there's some weird stuff going on. I'm just wondering if this is anything cardiac. And, you know, obviously Felicity and I, we're, we're both physicians, uh, although we don't pra practice clinical medicine over here. Uh, and a quick conversation uh, between him and I, uh, helping identify his legitimate concerns, but also helping him see that, no, he didn't really need to, unless he felt he wanted to, dash off to an emergency room. Uh, instead, he could go and see uh, uh, the family doctor. He's part of one of these uh, direct primary care practices where you can see your doctor any day, any time. Uh, you belong as a member for basically less than the cost of a gym membership, but you have open access to a doctor who's chosen to limit the size of their practice to just the number of patients, maybe around 500, that they can really look after well. Uh, and that tiny little decision, which was the result uh, of, uh, of this friend of ours having easy access to me uh, and just saying, uh, you know, Mr. Doctor, uh, can, you, can you advise me whether I need to go to the emergency room? And I, I can't advise him, I'm not clinically licensed over here, uh, but I can give him my opinion as a friend and say, hey, you know, why don't you just have your wife drive you over to see your family doctor? Okay. That, at its core, is the essence of what happens if people don't know what to do, which is going to lead to them needing to pay for catastrophic care. Because when you walk into the emergency room, especially with something that could be viewed as potentially cardiac, you're asking for a multiple thousands of dollars of bills and to probably be admitted for a context that absolutely does not need an admission in the normal description. Uh, if it does need it, you know, that's wonderful. And the family doctor could point him in that direction if that's appropriate. Okay, but who directs you or how you direct yourself absolutely profoundly impacts catastrophic care. Well, Someone who reached out uh, to us at Sidera uh, and said they needed some a uh, sort of quasi-dental work, but it uh, usually would be done by a maxillary facial surgeon. Uh, not complex stuff, uh, but they reached out to their local hospital via the dentist that they were going to, uh, who had given them an estimated quote of $180,000 for what needed to be done. Okay, that <laughs> is paying for catastrophic care. A simple question from them to the hospital saying, how about if I pay cash, brought the cost down to 50,000. That's $130,000 off, okay? Two thirds of the price uh, almost taken off uh, just for saying that you would pay cash. And when they said to us, and is that 50,000 a great price? We said, well, actually, you know, you could probably have this be done uh, in a way that's more convenient to you uh, from a surgeon with every bit as much experience, maybe more uh, than the hospital you were considering going to, uh, but at what are now known as some of the free market surgery centers. Uh, and yeah, the price that uh, we gathered there is going to be somewhere between eight and $12,000. Okay, there is something wrong with a system where those sort of distortions of the system uh, are leaving patients completely in the dark. Uh, and so, you know, what's happening here, this is just one of the, uh, the big five of the health insurance companies. It doesn't really matter which, because the principles are the same. Uh, it also doesn't matter whether it's the supposed not-for-profits, like some of the blues, or whether it's some of the for-profits, like United Healthcare. Uh, you know, as you look at the system, there is a system that has become perfect at what it was designed to do. Unfortunately, it wasn't designed to deliver good health care. It was designed 
to, as it were, separate people at their most vulnerable time from as much money as possible in the process delivering enough health care that they feel like they've been well treated. If I can get across one thought this morning before I hand over to Juliet, it would be this thought. CEOs are potentially a greater catalyst for change than anybody else. Fast Company put it, CEOs have a greater ability to make change than politicians, journalists, and religious leaders. Especially in the healthcare world, CEOs can have an incredible impact. My son-in-law uh, is the CEO of a couple of uh, Chick-fil-A franchises that he's the owner operator of. Uh, and he took what they were doing uh, and just the employee portion was so expensive that out of the sort of 50-ish employees he had, only five were taking advantage of the program. You know, since he's taken over uh, the, these two franchises, uh, you know, he's now working with about uh, 85 employees. That same amount of money that was being spent then is now enabling 20 families. When you access healthcare through cash, it's significantly less expensive. I told everyone yesterday, the local hospital, if I walk in and say, bill me later, they're going to charge me $345,000 for a liver transplant. If I walk in with an insurance card, they're going to bill my insurance company $221,000. If I walk in with cash and say, I'm going to pay this with cash, they charge me $81,000. That is what cash can do when you bring it into the equation of healthcare and you remove the enormous complexity of claims and processing and networks and contracts and all that, all that crazy stuff. Well, what a sharing program is, is a community of members who simply share a portion every month. They simply put money into a pot. That pot is then used to reimburse them for services they've accessed to the healthcare system through cash. And if for some reason that burden becomes bigger, everybody puts more money in. If it becomes less, everybody puts less money in. And I will tell you, having been involved with now this sharing program for, I think, four years, I've never seen a change in how much money I have to put in the pot for this group of members that I belong to that's tens of thousands of people across the country who believe buying health care in a very common way and in a very respectable and a, in a way that makes sense can share in each other's savings. And we spend half as much as if I were involved in an insurance plan. So yeah, yeah, I was asked to share just a little bit about my journey and um, with healthcare and how I came to be involved with the Sidera community. Um, that experience comes from the employer group side, uh, bringing on Sidera for my team. And it comes from having a need shared as a member. And then it also comes from joining the Sidera team um, because of that experience. Uh, so that, that story starts back in 2017 when I was the office manager for a startup here in Austin, Texas. Being an office manager, I wore every hat from accounts receivable, accounts payable, events, wholesale, payroll, um, anything you could throw at me, I would take care of. Um, another one was the HR responsibilities for health care renewals each year. Um, we were the standard case that you know we kind of you know that you hear about every year receiving renewal increases every year changing carriers to find the best deal the costs were going up deductibles were going up premiums were going up but the most important part care was going down um, I knew that there had to be a better way. And so I was actually put in touch with a local DPC or direct primary care doctor here in Texas uh, who spent 30 minutes chatting with me about his practice and making suggestions. And one of those suggestions was Sidera. And that simple recommendation was how it all began. So after reaching out to Sidera, a couple reps came out to share about what how medical cost sharing worked. Um, and I was instantly intrigued and loved the community aspect of sharing one another's costs, medical costs with the community. Um, we ended up moving forward with bringing on Sidera for our team that summer. 
And wearing the HR hat, I was the appropriate person for our team to reach out to and make sure that they understood, you know, when Sidera was appropriate and a medical cost that they had. And it just so happened that it was my own personal medical incident that um, when I had an emergency C-section with my son and him spending 10 days in the NICU, that that was the first need or incident to be shared with my previous employer. So, you know, I get it. it it's different. Um, I relate moving to Sidera from a major medical policy, kind of like moving from an Android to an iPhone. It's going to feel strange. It's going to feel awkward in the beginning, but after you're, after you're in it, um, after you move through your first need with the community and you can clearly see what's on offer for you just by breaking old habits and making new ones, um, you know, that is what keeps what keeps it going, you know, for Sidera and, and our members. So. There's some significant change that needs to take place in the healthcare space. And one of the most egregious areas certainly is pharmacy benefit management. So before I talk about the Costco member prescription plan, which feeds so beautifully into what this is all about, uh, you know, many of you are probably Costco members. I mean, candidly, a quarter of the nation of the United States are Costco members, um, which may or may not be hard to believe, but uh, it's that number. So a lot of folks are familiar with, with you know, our whole model which is tremendous service, tremendous price, tremendous negotiating, and taking care of the people who, you know, trust us from an ethical perspective to deliver. Um, so it, it, it's, it's, it dovetails beautifully. Um, corporately, we are the third largest retailer in the world, uh, have a significant amount of capital and cash, uh, available to do the right thing. The ethical component of how we approach business is incredible. Our business model, if you are a Costco member, you understand. Um, so just with that tee up, we got into the pharmacy management business probably about 10 years ago when our own board came to us and said, this egregious system is not working. Why are we not solving this problem for our own employees and for others who assume the same responsibility financially and really don't understand this whole prescription drug thing? So we created Costco Health Solutions. A portion of Costco Health Solutions is a program that we call the Costco Member Prescription Program. All you got to do to do this is be a member of Costco, and I'm going to call up my screen now and show you. So here's, here's what we do with this, and this fits so beautifully into the cash payment topic that we're talking about, right? So our Costco member prescription program, it's an opt-in program. If you already have insurance uh, or particularly Medicare or Medicaid, uh, not available. We have a narrow network of pharmacies, which includes all Costco pharmacies. And uh, domestically, we have 574 of them in the United States. Also, most uh, independents also participate, as well as one other national network, Walgreens. So access is not an issue to this. 100% of the discounts we receive as Costco wholesale slash Costco Pharmacy are, uh, are passed on to our members and patients. You know, some history here. Um, we're not kicking the tires with this. We got close to a million people that are currently participating in this program. The slide I show here, uh, you know, as of June 1st, we had 992,000 uh, people, close to a million utilizing members. These aren't scripts. These are prescriptions. These are the number of human beings that have figured out that through cash savings, they can access the program that we've made available. And it's making a tremendous difference in their lives financially 
uh, and they're still getting the support that they would if they were in a traditional health plan. Daryl might chuckle at this, but we make our money on dollar fifty hot dogs and toilet paper and uh, other th- and rotisserie chickens, and so we pass this on to our members almost at cost. And so I just wanted to make sure that people are understanding there's a big difference between sharing and insurance. And some of those differences are remarkable when it comes to protecting financial security. Now, is it insurance? No, it's not insurance. Don't want anybody to get the impression that it is insurance. It's joining a community that shares in your expenses and you contribute to that community. And if the costs go up for the community, your monthly costs go up. If they go down, your monthly cost goes down. Like I said, insurance costs go up much more, much faster than my community that I belong to uh, over the last number of years.